Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the reloading bench. What we're going to be doing today is going to be covering 224 Valkyrie brass prep. So my tools are pretty basic. Hopefully you'll have the equivalent of my tools or better. Hopefully you have better. But uh, I'm going to just run you guys how I'm going to go through brass prep for this cartridge. Brass prep will be its own video and then I will follow it up with actually loading and going out and testing the cartridges. So we're going to start off with brass prep. I'm going to show you guys how I set up my new dies for this, as well as push the shoulders back just a few thousandths, get the die set up just right for it, uh, decap, deburr the flash holes, uh, chamfer deburr, and trim my 224 Valkyrie. So let's get to it. It's time to rock and roll because I'm excited to get some loaded up and get back out to the range and shoot long range again. If you guys like the shirt from Trajectory Design Co., uh, be sure to check them out. Uh, you can see the big old bolt face right here. Got the bolt coming off off to the side for your bolt action rifle. Around the edge it says Trajectory Design Trajectory Design Co. One shot, one kill, no luck, pure skill. Pretty sweet design. They have a bunch of awesome long range shooting stuff. Be sure to check them out. Thanks to Trajectory for sending me a couple shirts so I look good while I do this. As always, we can't forget, you must bring a loading buddy. I've got my loading buddy. Don't forget yours. Let's load some Valkyrie. Well, all right, guys. Let's talk about some of the tools and components that I've got here. Right here, I've got some once-fired brass. It's still got the primers in the brass. This stuff just came right out of the rifle, and it's ready to rock and roll. Needs to be reloaded. Now, whether you have brand new brass or you have once-fired brass like this, it doesn't matter. I go through the same process in setting up all my dies. So whether it's new or you actually have once fired brass, uh, you should be good to go, no worries. Personally, I'm using Redding reloading dies. Um, the only difference this will make in the video is if you don't have Redding dies, maybe the manufacturer of your dies suggests setting them up a slightly different way. I believe Redding just says go down and touch the shell holder. Uh, I will read that at a later point, but that's gonna be the only difference for you. As far as lubricant for sizing the cases, I'm using Redding Imperial Sizing Dye Wax because this stuff is easy and it seems to last a really long time, as well as it lubricates very well. Something over here, I've got my calipers set up, and then I've got this weird tool on my calipers. If you've never seen this before, this is a Hornady Headspace Comparator. Now, you see that it has 223 written on it. This is their A size, uh, which is like .330 diameter hole in here. Basically, it's not on the chart yet from Hornady as to what the Valkyrie should use. And looking at it, it sits right about in the middle of the shoulder uh, looking at this tool. So it's really similar to 223 Remington. We're gonna start with this and it'll get us our measurement. Outside of that, I've got my drill and then I've got my custom Lee cutter and lock stud that I'm gonna be trimming my brass with. So we'll get into that in a little bit. Let's get our dies set up. We're gonna be using our Redding sizing dies. I'm gonna pop this open, I've got my directions, I'll read those, as well as a shell holder. Now this die set does not come with a shell holder. A lot of die sets don't. Don't overlook that. Be sure to get yourself a shell holder when you're buying your Valkyrie components. The good news about the Valkyrie is that legitimately it's nothing special. If you've reloaded 223 or you've reloaded 6.5 Creedmoor, it's gonna be the basic same general process. If you've never reloaded and you just picked up a 224 Valkyrie, well, I'm going to get into a little bit of the details for you, but for the people who have reloaded before, I'm not going to get into excruciating detail on the 224 Valkyrie. I've got plenty of videos on like 6.5 Creedmoor and 223 Remington where I get really detailed into that side of stuff, as well as 243. So for this, we're going to get semi-detail oriented and uh, enough to help you learn a little bit, but not too much to where I'm boring you to death. So here's a look at my single stage press. This is my Lee O-Frame press. Uh, super basic, really affordable. I bought the Lee kit and that's how I got started in reloading. There's nothing wrong with this press at all. If this is what you have, I like mine, uh, really because it was affordable and it works. So the Lee comes with little priming arms for your press. Uh, the reason you put the, the reason we're gonna be using the priming arm is when it pokes out the, when it pokes out the spent primer, it's gonna come down here, bounce off this arm, and fly through the hole on the other side. So I need to have that in so I don't just dump primers everywhere. Uh, next thing we're gonna need 
is a shell holder because you have to put your shell holder in the press and lift it to the top to get your die set up. So now let's grab our die and we're going to be using our Redding full length resizing die. This is not small base because I actually have a bolt action 224 Valkyrie and then you can see our little decapping pin that's sticking out about 3 16 which is what I believe they call for. This one's also got a little locking uh, Allen head right here. It pushes into the threads and locks it in. Not my favorite design, but it will work. So let's thread this in and then let's read the directions as far as what Redding wants us to do with our die. Okay, so I just read the directions and Redding suggests that you screw the die in, you raise your press to the top, and then you screw the die in until it makes contact with your shell holder. So we're gonna set it up to what the factory spec suggests we're going to check how far it's moving our brass back, and then we're going to adjust it accordingly to get it set just perfect for our rifle. So let's screw this down. And I like to back it out and screw it back in a couple times. That's where it's making contact. So once it's made firm contact, you take the locking ring while holding the press down so that this is pushing up against it, uh, then tighten the locking ring with your fingers. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and throw a piece of brass in here. We'll get it lubed up and see where this pushes the shoulder back to. Okay, now if you have brand new brass and you have never fired a round through your rifle and you don't have once fired brass, not one piece, I would set the die up to what it suggests and run your brass through it and full length size it. That will straighten out your case necks and all that. Um, I've actually had some new brass where the case necks were really small and it put a lot of neck tension on the bullet. So I had to full length size them to get them to seat correctly. So that's my advice is go through the process, full length size, and uh, set it up how your die manufacturer suggests you to. Okay, if you do have a once fired piece of brass and you also have a Hornady headspace comparator, check this out. So this is once fired, came out of the rifle. Let's take a look here. You need to make sure that you don't have any cratering on the primer, that you don't have a little ring that sticks out. Otherwise, that little tiny piece of metal will be thrown off your measurements. These are fine. Uh, I don't have any cratering going on on these. Uh, that's really kind of a 6.5 Creedmoor thing. I get a lot of cratering with my 6.5 Creedmoor. So right here, from the base to the middle of the shoulder is 1.262 and a half. So let's zero this. And we'll run a couple pieces through. And we'll just see where they're at. They should all be really close. That one zeroed out. So you might have some that are just a touch long. You can rotate them around and remeasure them. Try and get it settled into that die a little bit. This one's a thousandth longer. Nothing to worry about if it's a thousandth longer. If you have one that's like five or six longer, something was up there and uh, kind of go with whatever the average is of the group. So most of these measured out to what that first piece did. Okay. So now that we have our base to headspace measurement, we've got it zeroed out. We're gonna loop this case up and we're gonna run it through our die. Then we're going to measure it again. And what we're trying to do is bump this shoulder two thousandths for my bolt action rifle. If you have a semi-auto, you probably wanna go to four thousandths back to where the caliper says negative zero zero four. You wanna make sure that your caliper is reading negative and not positive because it's totally possible to put a piece of brass into your resizing die and it come out being just a touch longer than when it went in. So let's test out this die and see what it does to this brass. This is where our Redding case wax comes in. And this stuff is like a very kind of a firm wax. It's not real soft, so it lasts a long time. You kind of got to do it a few times to get your fingers greased up. But once you get enough on your fingers, you can pretty much start waxing cases with just the residue on your fingers for a couple cases. So there we go, got some around the neck. Take your finger, because like in your fingerprint, there's a little bit of residue in there, and smear some into the case mouth. You can take a Q-tip and grease it up in there as well. But uh, you definitely wanna get the inside of your case mouth because that's gonna be sliding over metal as well. Um, get down to the base of your brass because that's gonna be going through the most pressure. So let's run it up into our press. And once I reach the bottom of the stroke, I'm going to give it a good firm press. There we go, totally bottomed out. You're gonna feel a little resistance coming out. That's the expander ball. Your brass goes in, it squeezes the neck down pretty small, 
on its way back out it slides over that expander ball and gives you that perfect circle and just the right amount of neck tension across each piece of brass that you run through it. So it looks a little bit dirty. Um, we didn't put too much wax on here, no dents or anything like that. Well, let's grab our comparator and let's see what it measures to. So this one grew about a thousandth. So like I said, it's totally possible for it to grow. So what we've got to do is we've got to loosen the lock ring. And we're going to go in just a little tiny bit with this die. And when I say a little bit, I mean I'm talking like a sixteenth of a turn. So let's push the ram up. That will lock the body of the die. We'll be able to unlock the lock ring. Now the way I do this is when they have the stampings on the side, I pay attention to how far that stamping is rotated. So this one says Redding. Uh, the R is in a specific place that I can see, so we'll just rotate that about right there. So now we're on the D instead of the R. So then you tighten your lock ring back down. I'm pushing down on the press to do that, so I'm not just rotating the die around. Now we'll lift up. We can take that same piece of brass and run it through again. You want to try and get this within just one or two uh, cycles because constantly working your brass over and over and over it will create it work hardens your brass so if I don't get this in like three tries with a piece then I move on to another piece and once I get my die completely set up then I'll run it through the final time okay so now we're down to negative four thousandths this would be good for a semi-auto I'm actually going to back the die out so the farther you push it in, the more it starts smashing your brass. The more you back it out, the less it pushes your shoulder back. So this one's already been oversized. Now I can't keep sizing this to make sure that my die is set up correctly. All right, I've got the die set up to where it's pushing it back three thousandths. We'll call that good enough. It'll just give me a little bit more headspace. Not a huge deal. Three thousandths is pretty ideal as well. For a bolt action uh, for more precision stuff one and a half two thousandths is great three thousandths is just fine uh, like i say four to five for a semi-auto so the way i keep track of if i've sized or i need to size is i'll flip my cases over as i go so these three have been sized these need to be sized so i've already grabbed my next piece got a little bit of wax on my fingers you can see they're a little shiny so you just rub the neck there's a lot of uh, forces going on on the outside of the neck, so definitely be sure to get that. And then there's a lot of force going on inside the brass body because that's the thickest part of the brass. It's gonna have the most resistance. Let's load up inside the neck a little bit. Once you've got your die set and locked in, there's very little chance that it's going to change. Um, if you're doing a huge lot, like just give it a check with your comparator every, every few or so, um, as well as you guys without the comparator. Uh, just make sure that your dies looks like it's sitting in the same spot, that it's set up like your manufacturer suggests it is. Now before doing a whole big batch of resizing and all that, you might want to take a few pieces and just make sure that they fit in your rifle's chamber. Never a bad idea. Um, you can take an empty piece of brass and throw it in your chamber and your bolt should close nice and freely. It should feel like there's nothing in there. With just a piece of brass so shouldn't be an issue at all just a good thing to check so we've got all these resized they now have a, a fresh coat of wax on them as well as these federal brass pieces were pretty long and once we resize them when you fire the brass everything moves out just a little bit but once you squeeze it all back down the brass has to go somewhere so it goes up towards the neck and so that lengthens your brass every time you resize it Depends on the brass and all that as far as how much it will, but this stuff was long to begin with and now that we've resized it, it's right at the maximum of SAMI spec for brass trim length. So now it's time to trim this brass. So the way I've got this trimmer set up right now, uh, this, little, this little guy from Lee just goes into your drill, not a big deal at all. Um, I had to create my own cutter, cutter. I had to create my own gauge. This determines how long the brass will get trimmed to, 
If you can see the cutters up here, um, they make this for all different sorts of calibers. So the pins will be wider or thinner uh, depending on the caliber of the rifle. This is a 22, so it's pretty narrow. And then uh, from the tip of this pin to the cutters is how long the brass will be. So I actually took one for a slightly longer 22 caliber and then I grinded this shoulder back and then I grinded the pin down to the specific length to where it will trim this brass into Sammy spec. Now unfortunately in doing that I didn't end up with the right uh, shell holder for this part that goes in the drill. So my brass might be a little bit wobbly in this video. I just need to get the right shell holder. I just haven't had time to do that yet. So what I'm actually using is the number two shell holder. So this will fit 308. The reason I have it is because it fits 6.5 Creedmoor. So chuck that up in here and then we're just gonna run this in and then the drill, as it spins the brass, will force the brass into the cutters down here and it will start trimming up our brass. So you'll see brass trimming falling and now there's no more brass coming off. That brass has been trimmed all the way down to where this pin has come in contact with a steel base inside here. This little pin comes through the flash hole and it bottoms out on that steel. So it's not cutting anything. It's really easy to tell if in real life when you're actually cutting because you have a whole bunch of resistance and all of a sudden it stops. It just free spins. So it's really easy to tell this piece of brass has been trimmed. So now this has created a sharp flat edge. So now this has created a sharp flat edge on the mouth of the case. And we're gonna do what's called chamfer and deburr the brass. It doesn't take much at all. Um, in fact, because there's so many cutters on here, you just twist it and bring it back. So you twist it forward, slide it back, twist it forward. You do that a few times and there's no more burrs in there. You take the other end and this just clears up the outside. And it squeaks a lot, so if you have it in the drill and you power through it, it'll squeak and make a whole bunch of terrible noise. But chamfer and deburr is done. Now we just take the paper towel, that little shop rags in my reloading bench, and because it has that wax on the outside, Now when I handle my brass, it's not absolutely it's not absolutely slathered in wax. It's still got a little bit on there. We're still going to clean this at the end of this, but uh, this brass is ready to go into the tumbler at this point. So let's run through this a little bit quicker. So at this point, I've done my process on this brass. I'm gonna stand it back upright again. So I'm picking them up with their case heads, and when I'm done with them, I'll set the case head down. So let's just throw this guy in the, in the shell holder. Again, if I had the correct shell holder, this would be a lot smoother of a process. Everything would fit correctly. Okay, it's finally stopped cutting. So we'll take that out. Take our deeper and chamfer tool. Just spin it a few times. Try and keep it straight as possible. And literally just twice like that, we'll chamfer and deeper your brass. Now you got nice sharp edges on the on your brass which is a good point to bring up um, if you have this spinning in a drill after you've chamfered and deburred this watch the edge of this brass basically it's been sharpened the idea is not to sharpen the brass but it's really sharp now so if you're holding onto the end of the brass or something and you're trying to clean it and your finger slips man it'll cut right through you so be careful of that So something important to know here is you want to resize your brass before you trim it. Like I was talking about earlier, resizing is what stretches your brass. So if you trim it and then you resize it, it's going to grow. So you definitely want to resize before you trim your brass. Now, I have another tool. This isn't necessary, but it's a good idea if you're trying to shoot long range, maybe with your 224 Valkyrie around here. Um, this is a flash hole deburring tool. So what we've got here, down in your brass, you've got your flash hole. That's the part in the primer cup that they took a pin and then they just 
push that through to create the flash hole. Now on the inside of the brass, when they pushed that through, it created jagged edges. So what you have to do is you have to take your flash hole deburring tool, which is essentially a funky shaped drill bit, and this comes out of your flash hole from the inside of the case mouth. And if I back this up, you should be able to hear it. Hear how it clicks? So what I'm doing is I'm backing this up and these burrs are getting raised up on the brass and then it's falling back down on the tool. So it raises back up and it falls back down. That's what's clicking. So that tells me that the inside of this has burrs in it. So you need to firmly hold on to your piece of brass and just nice and easy spin this around and you don't have to you don't have to let go and do this every time. You can just do this a couple times and that will deburr your brass. So now that we've done this, you look at my hand there, there's a little bit of brass. I didn't put much force on it, but uh, you are clearing out just a little bit of brass and you're not trying to bore your way to the other side or anything like that. You just want to get rid of those burrs, spin it around a few times, click it on the countertop, and then this thing's been deburred. You only have to ever do this one time with whatever piece of brass you have. Those burrs will never come back. That's from actually forming the brass. So this one's been taken care of. I'm gonna go through and do all of these. We'll show you one more. Super simple process. You just spin it around and then you dump out the brass that was on the inside. So this has been taken care of. I'll never have to do this again. I always do this the first time I go through my brass prep that way all of my brass has uh, been flash hole deburred and then anytime I reload it I don't have to worry about it again. So a little piece of advice, these things are fairly cheap, I think they're like 10 or 12 bucks so you can get ones that are fancy and work even better than this thing for a little bit more but really flash hole deburring tools are never going to be that much. The whole concept of that flash hole deburring tool is just so that when the primer goes off and it sends out that spark it gets a good even uh, ignition across all the powder along the bottom. I mean, if you think about it, if you put a wall of brass on the right side of the brass, and then there's no burr on the left side, this wall is going to stop the spark from traveling to the right. And it's going to force it all to the left, and then it's going to ignite your powder column unevenly. It's getting really technical, and you're starting to worry about the crazy stuff. Um, but it is definitely a real thing for, I mean, you can see how much brass you're removing. There's definitely burrs in there and it's worth taking out. All right guys, so in my teaching you how to reload Valkyrie series, as luck would have it, I happened to get a split case neck. Now this was probably split from actually just the first firing, which is unfortunate. Uh, this is now absolute trash. So never try and reload a split case neck. Uh, this thing could completely rupture next time you shoot it. So this is what a split case neck looks like. Be on the lookout for that. Also, the way like it has that just dark line, you can get split case bodies as well as case head separation. You'll get cracks around the bottom here where the brass wall turns into the bottom of the brass. Uh, there's a lot of pressure right there and that's where your brass grows from. It's like right at the tip of my fingernail there. Um, that's where all the brass starts growing from and it'll thin out that wall eventually and eventually it'll break. But that's a split case neck, so definitely keep your eye out for those. Those aren't any good. Um, as you run this through your uh, resizing die, it'll probably feel a little bit weird, but uh, I was kind of using odd angles to get the camera in there, so maybe that's why I didn't notice it. But in trimming and all this, it gives you plenty of opportunity to inspect your brass as you go, so definitely be sure to inspect your brass as you go. Keep a lookout for those split case necks. All right, guys, got our pile of brass at the bottom and all this freshly trimmed 224 Valkyrie as well as the flash holes being deburred. These things are ready to go into an ultrasonic cleaner and then a vibratory tumbler to dry them off and give them a final polish. So I've got the Valkyrie brass mixed in with some 6.5 Creedmoor brass. These are ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, this is like a lab grade ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I actually got this for free. I don't know if I would have uh, put up the money to get one for myself, but if someone offers you a free ultrasonic cleaner, you don't say no. So. Let's go ahead and dump these down into the water. The reason it was already wet is I wanted to verify that there was enough water in here to completely fill up the cases. I stand them up just so that way there's no air inside the cases. That's the only reason I'm that tedious about it. 
but uh, it's just Dawn dish soap and Lemmy Shine. So like, it smells like lemons. It's just like a type of crystally looking powder stuff. And then Dawn Ultra dish soap. And I've done like quite a few batches and I've still got plenty of Dawn left. And I've got plenty of Lemmy Shine left. You can go a long way on just these two right there. And then I just add a little bit of warm water, not hot. This one doesn't heat my water. So I have to put it in as warm as I want it to be. I know that the Hornady's do heat it as you go, so it'll start getting really hot. So I've just got a little timer here, about 12 minutes. All right, that actually was pretty clean. It didn't uh, fog up the water too bad. So I've got a 6.5 Creedmoor on the left. I've got my 224 Valkyrie on the right. Nice and shiny, that Lemmy Shine brings out the uh, nice bright brass finish. And then uh, of course the Dawn gets rid of the grease and whatnot. This strips off all the wax that I had on there. And then to dry it, I throw it in my tumbling uh, media here, and that will double as also drying it. It gets in there and it dries it all out, and then it doubles as polishing it, is what I meant to say. So uh, dries it, polishes it, I'm gonna let it sit in here for an hour or two, and then we're gonna check up on it. And here it is, guys. Nice and polished, beautiful looking brass, nice and clean primer pockets. It's clean on the inside. Trim to length, chamfered and deburred. No more burrs on the flash holes anymore. Full length resize. Push the shoulders back three thousandths just to where it will fit perfectly in the chamber of the rifle. Please stay tuned for the reloading video and my first attempt at reloading the 224 Valkyrie. I'm going to be using Reloader 17, which is brand new. I've never even uh, used this in any of my other rifles either. This pound of powder is brand new. Reloader 17 is not new. But these bullets are brand new. The 22 grain Hornady, the 22 caliber Hornady 88 grain ELD match. Very long and sleek 22 caliber bullet. Should be excellent. Good and affordable. The twist rate in my rifle should stabilize them. We're gonna see what kind of velocities we can get with Reloader 17. So I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you found something in this video helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them below. I really appreciate you watching, and we will talk to you guys in the next video.